So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use all of the color coded expense tabs, how to enter expenses in your spreadsheet, some examples of how these work. And in the remaining parts of this video, you will see me using the older version of my seller spreadsheets. It has slightly different tabs down here um, and a slightly different layout that you may notice, but don't let that throw you off. The way the expense tabs work in that version and the way they work in this version are exactly the same. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use your expense tabs. So I've got these color-coded expense category tabs down here at the bottom of your spreadsheet. And you would enter individual transactions, individual expenses in these categorized tabs and the built-in formulas directly on the monthly summary tab are going to pull in the totals each month for you and show you one lump sum for the month in the applicable spot. So you don't want to delete these formulas. You don't want to type over them directly. If you're using a locked version of the spreadsheet, it actually won't let you, but sometimes in Numbers or Google Sheets, it can be easy to accidentally delete these formulas. You don't wanna do that. You want to enter these transactions on the appropriate tab and not directly on the monthly summary tab itself. The exception to that are these custom expense rows. I've got two custom expense rows under selling expenses and three under business expenses. You can rename these if you need to, to whatever you want them to be. Those are some examples. And you've got three customizable business expense ones here that you can rename to be whatever you want. I, I want you to make this customizable and specific for your business needs. So that's why those exist. The other categorized tabs correspond to the most common expense categories I see handmade sellers have as a business. So that's where these came from. They also correlate to what you will end up putting on your tax return. Finally, I've also got an other expense tab that is here for you to rename to whatever category you feel like is missing for you. I suggest you use the miscellaneous expense tab for like one-off random expenses that just don't fall under any other bucket. But if you've renamed these guys, these custom expense guys, but you want a whole tab dedicated to where you can enter individual transactions for a certain category, you can rename this guy. You can right click and do rename. Let's say I wanna name him education. Travel could be a good one. Sales taxes could be a good one. Whatever you think is applicable to you. You can rename the tab. You can rename it up here. And you can also rename it right here on the monthly summary tab. So you can rename that other tab to whatever category you want, rename these guys, and then use that miscellaneous expense tab for anything that doesn't fall under any other bucket. So I suggest you enter your business expenses either on a weekly or monthly basis, depending on how many you have. Uh, but you want to compile your documents, get those receipts together, get those invoices together, or pull up your bank statement, pull up your PayPal statement, whatever it is, and sit down to enter them into your spreadsheet. So the first thing you wanna do when you're looking at a specific expense is just determine which tab it's going to go on. Let's say I paid for a lawyer to come in and do a consultation with me, so I'm going to put that under professional services you would enter the date of the transaction. And assuming you're in the US, you want it to be in month, date, year format. So that would be something like this. So for January 15th, 2019, month, date, year, you can type it as 19 or 2019. Excel is automatically going to make it be 2019 for you. And then you want to enter the amount. And then you want to give some sort of description to your transaction. You might put, um, you know, the lawyer's name here, and then a, uh, a good, and then a good description, so you remember whatever it was if you're referring back to this. And then I've got a column here where you can enter the payment source if you want. So you could put PayPal, or you could put your credit card, or you could put your your bank account, whatever. If you have different payment sources, you can distinguish there. And then if you want to take any other notes or jot down anything else about this specific transaction, that's what the other column is here for. 
The most important thing to note about how these tabs work is that they're really dependent on the dates. If you don't enter a date at all, or if you don't enter the date correctly, it's not going to travel correctly to the monthly summary tab for you. If you ever notice amounts not traveling there correctly, you want to make sure that your dates are entered correctly. You want to make sure that you're entering years for whatever year file you're working with. If I started trying to put 2018 dates in the 2019 file, it's not going to work. Only 2019 dates are going to work on the 2019 file. If you enter um, a date that doesn't exist, like I see a lot of people accidentally doing the 29th of February in not a year that has the 29th of February, that is not going to show up on the monthly summary tab because that date is not real. That's a common mistake. So that's a common troubleshooting issue. Just make sure you're always entering these dates correctly so that your expenses travel to the monthly summary tab. Another question that I sometimes get about entering expenses on this tab is whether or not you want to include shipping and sales tax. And yes, you want to enter the entire amount that you paid for whatever it is you paid for. That means including shipping you might have paid, including any sales tax you might have paid, et cetera. Put the actual amount that you paid. So here's an example of three months worth of transactions on my office expense tab. Filled with some data, you can see that it is traveling as one lump sum over to the applicable row in each month for my office expenses on my monthly summary tab. One other helpful thing that you can do with any of these expense tabs is filter or sort. So for example, let's say you entered your transactions kind of willy nilly. Um, you didn't necessarily enter them originally in chronological order. That's fine. You can use any of these um, drop down boxes on your column headers to sort or filter your data. So if you entered them not chronologically, you could click the date column right here, the date little drop down box and click on ascending to automatically sort them in chronological order for you. If you want to look at expenses from a specific vendor, you could either sort a, send, a sort in alphabetical order by vendor name, or let's say I just wanna look at my total expenses so far this year to Tailwind. I can filter just to see Tailwind transactions and quickly see how much I've spent on Tailwind so far this year. And then to clear that filter so I can see all my transactions back, you're gonna click clear and everything comes back. And that won't affect anything going on on your monthly summary row. Even if you filter out certain transactions, the entire sum will still travel correctly over here. So that is something that you can do if you need to drill down into your data to take a closer look at something. The ability to filter or sort your expense transactions can be very helpful. The other thing that I want to chat about real quick when we're talking about expenses is that is another commonly asked question I get and that is I've got this specific type of expense. Where do I need to put it? And my answer to that is always going to be the same. This is something that I see way too many of us stress about. We get stressed, especially when it comes to tax time. How do I categorize this item? Where does it go? I don't want to put it in the wrong place. Well, good news. There's usually not a one right place that a certain type of expense transaction has to go. I encourage you to categorize your expenses in a way that makes sense to you. Just use common sense, be reasonable, and be consistent. So be reasonable and be consistent. Those are the two important things. That is my answer to you when you ask, where do I put this? Uh, pick something that seems reasonable and then consistently categorize it as that same type of transaction each time from month to month, from year to year. So if you pay for a certain type of thing, don't choose to make it an office expense one month and a tools and equipment expense the next month or an other expense one month and then put it as a custom expense the next month. Choose something that's reasonable and consistently choose that same place each time. 